This video is sponsored by Wildlife Command Center Coffee. More about them at the end of the video. Hey everybody, it's me, John Ward, and I am back with another Dark Park Film Reviews. And today we are gonna be taking a look at um, a collection uh, that I bought. Um, I did buy a second film, which is <clears throat> Wrong Turn, the new Wrong Turn movie. Um, I got the collection and Wrong Turn at Walmart, and this was only $7.50, $7.50. And uh, it's got the slip jacket and all that. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, not going to talk about that today. Um, I'm probably going to do a ranking of all of the wrong turn films uh, now that I have all of them. And uh, so that will be for another time. So this will go over here. Today's video is going to be, today's video is sponsored by the letter C for Canon Films. Uh, and it's this. I have wanted this for a long time. <clears throat> and it's the bombs, babes, and blockbusters of Canon Films 10-pack DVD collection. And um, when this originally came out, it was expensive. It was around 50 bucks, and uh, I just could not afford it. Um, I'd seen, yeah, I, I've seen all the movies on here. So I didn't find an urgency to, uh, to buy it because I'd seen everything. But I grew up with Canon Films. I am 54, and uh, I basically grew up with these guys uh, during like the late 70s, all of the 80s, um, you know, going into the 90s, and uh, loved and hated, you know, all their films. Uh, more love than hate, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, there were definitely some some misses. But I think more, uh, you know, more hits than misses. So um, I picked this up, you know, um, along with Wrong Turn at Walmart. This was only $20, and that's for 10 movies. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, 10 if you include down here the um, Electric Boogaloo, the wild untold story of Canon Films. And that's the documentary about Canon Films. So you get nine action movies, and one documentary, so 10. Um, and I, I love this. Um, seeing what films that they have on here, I really wish I knew how they determined which ones would go on and, you know, which films didn't. Uh, <clears throat> I think I kind of would have picked, because there's a fair amount of, uh, you know, like Chuck, and, and there's a couple by by Stallone that, uh, I know I almost would have would have gone something like one with Chuck Norris, one with Stallone, one with Van Damme, <clears throat> one with Dolph, um, one with Michael Dudnikoff, like throwing like an American Ninja movie, one with um, Charles Bronson throwing a Death Wish movie, <clears throat> kind of give nine films that, that explore, um, you know, all of canon. So I'm kind of curious of how they decided what films you know, got on this and, and what didn't. Um, I'll show you the side here. And then the other side is the same, except that's where you pull the whole thing out. And then the back looks like that. <clears throat> so on the front, you got, um, you got a little, a little Van Damme up there. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, you got a helicopter. Uh, there's Stallone, there's Van Damme again. Of course, there's Chuck Norris. Um, Stallone would be from Over the Top. That little Van Damme is from Bloodsport. Uh, Big Chuck here is, this is Invasion USA. Dolph Lundgren is from uh, Masters of the Universe. And then you got like the, the ship that Skeletor was on. And um, I forget her name, but she, she's from Masters of the Universe too. Um, then you got like the truck. Oh, the truck is from over the top. That's Stallone from over the top. Um, guessing that's Van Damme, probably from Bloodsport. And then uh, you got the army down here, which I think is probably from Invasion USA. <clears throat> and it does say uh, 
the here are the films that you get. So you get uh, Missing in Action, Invasion USA, Cobra, The Delta Force, Masters of the Universe, Over the Top, Bloodsport, The Hitman, Hellbound, and Electric Boogaloo. And no, this is not what you're thinking it is. The Electric Boogaloo is the documentary. So, I'm sorry. Um, I wish it was what you're thinking it is. Uh, then, this is the top of it. Uh, so let's see, let's open this thing. <clears throat> so it slides out, <coughs> oh, pardon me, <coughs> slides out like that. So it just fits right into the box. And it's a nice heavy box. So the, the DVDs are, are well protected. So you have the, yeah, it's just, it's the front of the box on the right here. Um, you know, there's the side and then it's got where you open it there. Um, the back gives all the credits. So you're looking at Missing in Action, Invasion USA, Cobra, The Delta Force, um, Masters of the Universe, Over the Top, Bloodsport, The Hitman, uh, Hellbound, and then um, Electric Boogaloo. And it gives all the ratings. Uh, let's see. So it's saying here... All films except Over the Top and Masters of the Universe are rated R. Uh, bonus material trailer not rated and may not be closed captioned. So it's saying Over the Top Masters of the Universe PG. Uh, the Hitman is rated R. And that is for strong gangster violence and language. Hellbound is R, and that's uh, R for violence. And then um, Electric Boogaloo, the wild untold story of Canon Films is also rated R. So it's an R-rated documentary <clears throat> for strong sexual content, graphic nudity, violence, including rape, language, and some drug use. I am sold. Absolutely sold. Um, Electric Boogaloo is the um, is the second documentary that's about the Canon guys. Um, <clears throat> so, in both documentaries are uh, are worth picking up. You know, they're they're definitely worth watching. Um, and let's see. <clears throat> so, let's see, missing in action. It's one hundred and one minutes. It's widescreen. Invasion USA also, uh, oh no, so wait, missing action, yeah, 101 minutes. Uh, Invasion USA is 110 minutes widescreen. Cobra is 87 minutes and it's widescreen. Uh, Delta Force is 128 minutes. Oh yeah, that's a long one. And it's full screen. So this is not a widescreen film? You would think it would be. That Golan and Globe has shot everything uh, widescreen. <clears throat> and for those who don't know, Golan and Globus were the guys who created Canon and ran Canon. Pretty much into the ground. Um, <clears throat> Masters of the Universe is 106 minutes and it's widescreen. Over the top is 93 minutes and widescreen. Man, so far the, the, the uh, Stallone movies are the shortest and it's not directed by him. So it's directed by um, um, uh, <clears throat> pardon me. It's directed by Golem. Of course, Stallone has a, a, uh, a writing credit because he, from what I understand, is he he always rewrites everything he gets. Let's see if he did that with Cobra. No, he just wrote the screenplay for Cobra. <clears throat> but Cobra is based on the book Fair Game by Paula uh, Gosling. 
And um, for those who don't know, they actually remade, well, they didn't remake Cobra, but they did do another adaption of the book called Fair Game, uh, which has, uh, <clears throat> I think it's Billy Baldwin, and it also has um, Cindy Crawford. And hysterically, Cindy Crawford plays a lawyer. Um, I remember going to the screening of that uh, with a group of friends, and um, it was like a year or two before the film came out, and we were dying. We were laughing our heads off, and uh, the director tried to get basically Cindy Crawford to be nude every single chance he could, or in a wet shirt or, or something like that. <clears throat> and then she ran out of the theater at the end uh, um, of that film, um, basically crying uh, because of the reaction from the, you know, from the audience. <clears throat> And uh, she was actually ran into the arms of Joel Silver, the producer, excuse me. <clears throat> I thought this would be appropriate, my Dark Park films, since that's my company and we're talking about Canon films. Uh, but anyway, she ran into the arms of Joel Silver crying. It, it, was, it was horrible, but I mean, at the same time, kind of funny in a way, but it was, it was pretty bad. And then when the movie came out, they cut out all the nudity. They cut out anything that could be considered funny. The film bombed. It was a horrible bore. Um, at least the other way was really entertaining. And I probably would have bought it <clears throat> uh, because I enjoyed it so much in a funny way. Uh, but Fair Game is not part of canon film. So we, we have no need to discuss it any further. Um, so over the top. So then the next one is Bloodsport. That's 92 minutes widescreen. That's one that they need to come out with a, a box set on is, is Bloodsport, Kick, uh, what is it, uh, Kickboxer, <clears throat> all of those. You know, I even have one of the one of the later ones here, Kickboxer. They just need to make box sets out of everything. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, next is the Hitman. It's 94 minutes. Full screen. It's another full screen movie. Um, and this one is directed by Aaron Norris, Chuck Norris's brother, who was a stuntman turned director. Um, Hellbound, 95 minutes, also full screen. Very confused. And directed by Aaron Norris. <clears throat> um, Electric Boogaloo, the wild untold story of Canon Films, 106 minutes. Probably could have been longer. You know, a good two hours on, on them would, I think, would have been great. Um, widescreen. Oh, and it does say that there's explosive extras, over 25 minutes of deleted scenes, and over 30 minutes of trailers. Well, there you go. I get, I get my two hours and more. So, and this is uh, Warner Brothers. Um, this is also Rat Pack, which is Brett Ratner's company. He's gotten some flack these days. Um, but that, that's his company, Rat Pack. All right, so let's take a look. Uh, well, actually, before we go inside, let's look at the back of the box of this. So it says, uh, big guns, small budgets, larger than life heroes. The iconic movies from Canon Films that made superstars out of Chuck Norris, Sylvester Stallone, Dolph Lundgren and Jean-Claude Van Damme. Uh, I'm going to have to disagree with some of that. Um, Chuck Norris was already a superstar. Stallone was already a superstar. Uh, Chuck might have been fading, but, you know, but uh, and maybe Cannon brought him back. But Stallone has al always been a star. But I don't think Dolph was in anything else except for Masters of the Universe. Stallone kind of helped him stay alive. And then Van Damme, yeah, I think his like No Retreat, No Surrender might have been canon, maybe. I know Cyborg was canon. So yeah, so they kind of started his career. Uh, but the first one they have listed here is Mission in Action, 1984. Uh, let's see, American servicemen are being held captive in Vietnam and it's up to one man to bring them home in this fast-paced action film starring martial arts superstar Chuck Norris, 
<clears throat> and anyone who's a Chuck Norris fan knows there are two sequels to this. Uh, there um, is uh, Missing in Action 2, The Beginning, and Braddock, Missing in Action 3. And uh, the uh, uh, Missing in Action 2 was not meant to be a Missing in Action 2 film, uh, but Missing in Action did so well. And uh, Missing in Action 2, what, I forget what its original title was, but uh, it played well as a prequel uh, to this. So that's why it's called Missing in Action 2, The Beginning. And then, of course, Braddock Missing in Action 3 was made because those two films did so well that they made a part three. <clears throat> and I enjoyed all three. Uh, the next one, Invasion USA, is uh, 1985. Um, so also Chuck Norris. And uh, let's see. When American forces... Oh, when American faces... Invasion by an army of terrorist mer uh, mercenaries. It's up to one. It's up to one man army. Matt Hunter, Chuck Norris, to wage war upon the enemies of freedom. And uh, Invasion USA, I think, is probably my my favorite film by him. It's a pretty brutal movie. Um, I would I would probably say it's not really an invasion of the USA, more kind of like invasion of, I don't know, a city, maybe? Because they because Chuck doesn't let them get past that. He does not let them go all over the place. He does not let them invade the USA. So there is no invasion USA, technically. More, like I said, invasion of a, of a city. Uh, then the next one is uh, Stallone, which is Cobra. Uh, 1986, Sylvester Stallone is a one-man assault force who must protect a witness, Brigitte Nielsen. Oh, the gold digger. Oh, yeah, her. Stallone's mother warned him about her and said that she's a gold digger. And guess what? She ended up being a gold digger. Uh, let's see. Protect the witness, Brigitte Nielsen from an army of psychos bent on slashing their way to a new order. Uh, Cobra is, the well, there's two Stallones. There's Rocky Stallone, and then there's like Cobra Stallone. And so you, you can't say, so when I say that Cobra is one of my favorite Stallone films, it does not fall into the Rocky Creed area it falls into the uh like over the top rhinestone in fact i have a yeah here falls into this category right here <clears throat> this category this is a stallone of light damn light there it's a stallone double feature of three of his worst movies so avenging um angelo i see you and Shade, which he has an and credit, which means that he's in the movie for about five minutes. But these are, are three of his. I've never seen Shade, uh, but I've heard it's not very good. It does have a good cast, though. Yeah, it's got uh, Stuart Townsend, Gabriel Byrne, Fatty Newton, Jamie Foxx, Blaney Griffith, and Sylvester Stallone. So it's got a good cast in it, but I've heard it's pretty bad. So, but yeah, so this, so Cobra falls more into the awesome, bad Stallone movies. Um, and the funny thing about Cobra is that th this new world or this new order that, that's trying to kill Brigitte Nisa, Nielsen, um, they're all about surviving, like survival of the fittest. And she keeps surviving every single attack that th that this group does on her. Um, they she lives, so it isn't. I mean, she should really be kind of put up on this pedestal because she survives every single time. Um, oh, and also, uh, uh, Stallone cuts pizza with scissors, so that that's his thing. Is that he gets he has pizza, and it, and instead of getting it already cut. Um, or just cutting it with a knife, he uses scissors to cut the pizza to get his slices because that's th this was during Stallone's real ego stage of you know type of thing. So it, it's 
you know, the, the eighties was not the best for, I don't think for, for Stallone on some things. Um, but I still love Cobra. Um, and uh, let's see. So the next one is another Chuck film. See, this is where I think they could have divided it up between some of the actors. Uh, but it's still a great. It's still a great collection. Uh, let's see. The Delta Force, 1986. When a U.S. passenger plane is hijacked and taken to Beirut, the president calls in a crack team of commandos led by Chuck Norris and the amazing, the awesome, the great Lee Marvin to rescue the hostages. Um, and of course, this is based off of a true story. Um, but it's good. It's one of the bigger budget films. It's very professional looking. Uh, it is long for like a canon movie and the type of movie that it is, I guess. But it's definitely worth watching. Um, then the next one is Dolph Lundgren. So that's Masters of the Universe, 1987. A group, uh, a group, a group of freedom fighters led by the heroic He-Man, Dolph Lundgren, attempts to stop the evil Skeletor, Frank Langella, from taking over their planet. This, this is the He-Man that counts, not the Kevin Smith He-Man. This is the He-Man that counts, and the '90s cartoon and the '80s cartoon, not the Kevin Smith one. This one. Um, next one is another Stallone movie, Over the Top, 1987. Uh, Stallone stars as a hard luck big rig trucker who tries to rebuild his life by winning a wrestling champion uh, championship with the love of his son he abandoned years ago. Well, it, it's it's arm wrestling. They they say wrestling, which makes it sound more like it's like two guys like on a mat. It is it, it's it's arm wrestling. That's his thing. And, and, he, and it's, it's Hawk. He goes by Hawk. And uh, when he has the cap on this way, he's the trucker. But when he turns it around, that's when he's over the top. Over the top. Um, but it's, it's stupid, but fun. Um, next is Van Damme, Bloodsport, 1988. Go inside the hidden Hong Kong arena of full contact fighting where American Frank Ducks, uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme, became the first Westerner to win the world championship. Spoilers, spoilers. What if I hadn't seen Bloodsport? Now I know he friggin' wins. How about just say he became the first Westerner to enter the world championship? Then we don't know if he wins or not. Why would they tell you the ending of the movie? All right. Next is another Chuck Norris. Uh, let's see. The Hitman, 1981. A good cop. Aren't they all good cops in movies? Most of them, until they're bad. And then they're a bad cop. Uh, let's see. A good cop, Chuck Norris, is betrayed and left for dead by his crooked partner. Dead by his crooked partner, survives. Left dead. Left for dead by his crooked partner, survives. It doesn't sound right. A good cop, Chuck Norris, is betrayed and left for dead by his crooked partner, survives, and goes undercover as a hitman for the mob in order to ex uh, extract revenge. Oh, I guess that's right. Sorry, my allergies. Um, hitman was a good one. Hitman was fun. Uh, then we have another one with Chuck Norris. Um, which is uh, Hellbound, 1994. Uh, Chuck Norris stars as a Chicago policeman who, while on a murder investigation in the Holy Land, discovers a powerful satanic messenger has been restored to life. Now there, they don't tell you who the satanic messenger is. I'm not going to tell you who the satanic messenger is. They give you just enough to hint at who it might be, but they don't tell you that he won the world fucking championship. So uh, that, that was a good description of this. Um, Hellbound is one of my, uh, one of my favorite Chuck Norris canon films. A um, little story behind that is when I was living in Pasadena long time ago, well, 1994, um, I did get a screening pass for this. 
And uh, it was at this itty bitty tiny little theater. I think it might have been on the, yeah, it was on the Warner Brothers lot. And I got there for it. And it was the completed movie. Like, like there, there wasn't a, you know, it wasn't one of those ones where you go see it, then a year later it comes out. This was, I believe this was finished, I think. And because um, I don't, I don't think I remember anything being, mm, it's been long enough. I, I can't say that. I might be a liar. There, could, there might be some stuff missing, but okay. It was a, uh, it was a screening and um, I'm not sure if it was completed or not, but um uh, Aaron Norris, Chuck Norris's brother, was there because he directed the film. And there was like two of us in the whole theater. So I thought that was pretty funny. And then they didn't even ask us if we liked the movie. They, they didn't give us any, any like forms to fill out. Like, what did you like? What didn't you like? I think, yeah, there was maybe like two or three. You know, it was a very small crowd for the size of the theater. And I thought that that was really funny. And it was kind of cool seeing Aaron Norris right there. Uh, but once again, nobody said anything. Nobody did anything like, oh, shit, you know, well, there's four people, you know, three or four people, whatever it was, two or three, you know, we might as well just play the movie for them. And they did. And um, it's enjoyable. It, it's fun. Um, and now the added film, the documentary, so also includes um, Electric Boogaloo, The Wild Untold Story of Canon Films. This is 2014. Uh, see, from director Mark Hartley comes this cinematic rampage through the hits and misses produced by the movie-obsessed cousins of Canon Films. Yeah, because they were, Golan and Globus were, uh, were related. Um, explosive um, extras over 25 minutes of deleted scenes and over 30 minutes of trailers. So that, that's pretty cool. So that's what that says. So now let's take a look inside. All right. So it looks like this, which is okay because it's a, it's a thick, heavy box, like a he like pl heavy plastic. Um, it looks like. So what they did was they put missing in action here and one side is widescreen. Get it up a little bit higher. There we go. Is widescreen and then the other side would be full frame is what I'm guessing. So I have not taken this out yet. Let's, uh, let's see if that's the truth. Oh. No, it's not a double-sided disc. Oh, maybe it is. But it, it's just not, it just doesn't say it. Because here it says standard, which would be full, for, there we go, standard, and then widescreen. So I think once this, like this side is widescreen, the other side is full frame. Um, then we have Invasion USA. And what's nice is that each film is on its own disc. So you're not losing any quality. So Invasion USA, Cobra, the Delta Forest, but the Great Lee you know, uh, Lee Marvin. Masters of the Universe. Over the top. Bloodsport. The Hitman. Hellbound. And then Electric Boogaloo is kind of in its own slot over here. So that's not bad. It's, it's pretty solid. And then it just clips shut. Yeah, so that's, that's a pretty solid packaging. So I'm very happy with that. And then we're going to put that, just slide that right back into its box. And I'll show you, because I already own Electric Boogaloo. So this is what the actual packaging and stuff looks like for Electric Boogaloo, for the documentary. Um, I think it's a great documentary, so I definitely wanted to, uh, to own it. Um, like I said, because this was, just, this was just too expensive at the time, but I definitely wanted this. And um, there's its spine and its back. So there's a uh, uh, Golem and Globus. They're up here. And then we got like uh, King Solomon's Mines. I'll try to pick these out. 
So King Solomon's mimes, see if you can see that there, okay. Enter the ninja, over the top, masters of the universe, invasion USA, Not sure what Van Damme film that, that is there. Yeah, I'm not sure what Van Damme film that is. I'm not sure what this one is either. It could be one of the King Solomon's Minds movies, maybe. Uh, yeah, rated R, widescreen presentation, 107 minutes. Yeah, it's got all the same extras as the, the disc from the from the set. So let's see. Um, so it says here on the back, director Mark Hartley takes us on a hilarious thrill ride through the masterworks of Golem and the late Golan, two movie obsessed immigrant cousins who became Hollywood's ultimate gate crashers. With hair triggering randomness, these cousins of chaos uh, turned, turned out a breathtaking cavalcade of hits and misses, uh, made movies out of posters, released a sequel before the original film, botched plots and bounced checks and buried careers. And in, and in so doing, changed the way movies were made and marketed. So, because they also, at, at one point near the end, um, they, they basically drifted apart and, um, one of them still, you know, was canon, and then the other one did Twenty uh, First Century, uh, which was their own, which, which is why there's like uh, there's two salsa movies that came out like way back when. One was just called The Forbidden Dance, and then uh, the other one was called Salsa the Movie, because they were basically if if one of them was doing a salsa movie, the other one was going to do a salsa movie. If one was going to do a karate movie, the other one did a karate movie. Um, so it, it kind of went back and forth. Uh, so it, it was kind of weird for a while there of, of how, of how things were working out with them. But, um, but yeah, that unfortunately one of them died and that kind of just ended everything. But, um, but yeah, that's the actual, oh, let's look inside. Ugh. Hate this. Disc is boring. I mean, they could have put a picture here, Superman or Chuck Norris or, Stallone or something, even the brother, you know, the cousins could have been right here, but boring. So, but I know I've said it before. I know it's environmentally friendly. I just don't like my stuff getting damaged. So, so yeah, so that's, uh, that's, that is it for these. There you go. So if you have a chance, definitely pick this up. 20 bucks at Walmart. Not a bad deal at all for 10 movies. Not bad. So I, I, I couldn't pass it up. Could not pass it up. I didn't even have 20 bucks to spare, and I still picked it up. I said, oh, I want that. Because um, it wasn't in, like, the area for the regular films. It was in the movies that were discounted. Not like the bins where you have to dig for movies. But it was up on a shelf, but it was in that discounted area because, like I said, this used to be like around fifty dollars, and now they moved it to that area. Uh, the same thing with Wrong Turn; it was around the same area. Uh, they obviously had a lot of overstock of this stuff, and uh, so now they're selling it for really cheap. So definitely go go check out Walmart when you can. See if you got these, especially if you're interested. This is it's a good greatest hits in a way. Or like a good starter kit. Like if you're curious about Canon films, this is a good way to start. Um, because there's, like I said, there's still Missing in Action 2 through 3. They only made one Invasion USA. They only did one Cobra. Um, Delta Force, there's three of them. And then Chuck's son is in part three. 
Uh, Masters of the Universe, they only did one, but Cyborg is actually technically a sequel to this uh, because uh, Albert Pune used the script. He rewrote the script for Masters of, uh, Masters of the Universe 2, um, and that became Cyborg. Over the top, there's only one, but of course, if you like Stallone doing this type of stuff, like the, the arm wrestling and all that, then watch Rocky. Uh, Blood Sport, I think there's at least three or four of those. Hitman, there's only one. Hellbound, there's only one. And then there's two documentaries. So I, I, I could be wrong. Let me, let me see here. Canon Films Documentary. So they list, let's see, the Electric Boogaloo. Ah, the Go-Go Boys. That's it. So it's called the Go-Go Boys. Let's see if I get the full. How did it become a filmmaker? That's the, this is the, the trailer for it. Um, the Go-Go Boys, the inside story of Canon Films from 2014. Uh, both are are worth watching. And just clicking on that trailer, I, it pops up here. Marvelous Videos. Marvelous Videos is really good on YouTube for this type of stuff. If you're interested in, in a channel that looks at a collection, like they would look at, you know, all the John Carpenter films. So they would look at all, I don't know, Dolph Lundgren's movies. So they look at, you know, like a certain mummy collection something like that werewolf films that they did one on the howling but they looked at all the howling movies these guys are really good for that type of stuff and this one here is nine forgotten movie gems by canon films so and that's right underneath the, the trailer for the go-go boys so so yeah so that's it that's about it so i hope you like this i hope uh this uh christmas is coming up you can go pick this up for christmas that'd be a good gift i think for uh Teenagers, adults, and, and older adults might like it, like myself, especially the ones who lived through the canon era. Um, you know, also maybe check out their stuff from 21st century because there was some, some interesting films in there too. So yeah, so that's it. So I hope that you enjoyed this video um, and I will see you on the next one. All right, bye. Hey everybody, thanks for hanging out after the video and uh, thank you for watching the very first Dark Park Films sponsored video. And who is that sponsor? Well, I've now learned if I do this with my hands, they go to the right area. There we go. That would be Wildlife Command Center Coffee and you can purchase it right there. You can go to their website, which is uh, buywcc.com, and pick up their coffee. Uh, they have uh, two blends, which I'm going to show you now. Um, the first coffee is this one right here. Uh, this is a breakfast blend. It's 10 ounces, and it is a medium ground. Um, and it does say, and it's breakfast, like I said, and this is what it says right here. It says... Uh, Early bird can catch the worm. So there you go, a breakfast blend coffee that helps you catch the worm in the morning. And um, I really like this one. I'm more of a, a, a breakfast kind of blend coffee guy in the morning. Um, so this one I, I really like. Um, it has that little bit of oomph to it to kind of get you moving, uh, you know, get you up and out. And uh, so I really enjoy this one, but that doesn't mean that I don't like the other one, which is this one right here. Uh, this is a dark roast. It is also 10 ounces. And both of these are $7.99 at their website. Pretty good price for 10 ounces worth of ground coffee. Um, this one is, um, it's a little darker. So it's, you know, I think it's better for drinking at night. Maybe if you're you know, writing a screenplay, or if you're filming, uh, this has got that oomph oomph 
that double punch to to get you going. So um, this is one that I also recommend. I like both of these quite a bit, uh, but I, I kind of do, you know, the breakfast in the morning and then the dark more at night. Um, so I recommend both of these quite a bit. And um, how did I find out about these two, you know, uh, these two coffees here? And how did I find out about uh, Wildlife uh, Command Center? Well, when I was working um, on uh, Night of the Zom Ghouls, there was a box of coffee that was just sitting there filled with coffee. And we didn't know what to do with it. Like, whose is this? Who brought it? Why, why is it here? And so we just kept going to the store and buying coffee. And then one day I said, why don't we just get the coffee out of the box and use that instead of, you know, wasting money on going to Smith's or whatever and, and picking up coffee. So we did. Uh, we did not realize that it was um, the Wildlife Command Center coffee and uh, that it, you know, was sponsoring the movie. And it was great coffee. Everybody loved it. And we just went right through it. By the last day of filming, this coffee was gone. And uh, I went and found out, you know, about Wildlife Command Center, asked if they would like to be a sponsor for Dark Park Films, you know, for their coffee. Um, as many of you know, I love coffee. I love coffee mugs. And so this was a perfect match. And Wildlife Command Center is great with animals. So they provide a great service for rescuing animals. So it's kind of that double whammy for me where coffee, helping animals, you can't go wrong. And they were even cool enough to send me, get in there, a coffee mug because they knew that I liked coffee mugs. And right now, I don't get that. Oh, 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 oh. A little bit. I don't want to go on the keyboard. But there's their, that's their uh, dark blend because I'm recording this at night. So I am, I am actually drinking that while recording. Um, also, one thing that you can get at their website, which is cool, is you can get this. There you go. This pocket knife, uh, which is $9.49. And um, this is pretty cool because it has their name on it. Uh, you know, Wildlife Command Center. We can catch it. And this is what it looks like. Put that down there. There we go. Fully, fully out. So you're getting like the bottle opener. You got the corkscrew. You got a screwdriver. You got a blade. And then you got this little hook thing that you can pop it into something that doesn't have a tab. And then, um, you know, the liquid or whatever in there will come out. So this is pretty cool. And um, I'm just going to keep mine in my car because you never know. You might need a pocket knife. So um, please support them. I'm going to have links down below, uh, you know, where you can, you know, check out just the uh, Wildlife Command Center. Um, I'll also have a link for Wildlife Command Center Coffee. And uh, it will basically be for uh, both these guys right here. And uh, please support them. Um, I support them. I think what they do is pretty awesome. And, um, you know, maybe this coffee will, will be on your set or in your kitchen. It will definitely be, you know, on my set in my kitchen. I know that. So uh, please, once again, I'm going to show you these. Please go to their, their website and uh, pick up their coffee and make it, uh, make it part of your day or night, depending on which one you, which one you like. So uh, that'll be about it. I really appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out with me. And uh, yeah, so thank you. And uh, once again, please, uh, please support uh, my channel. Please support uh, the Wildlife Command Center. And I will catch you later. Bye.